in the spring. Is are we do we want to invest money in your money and our money? Yeah. Do we want to invest money in it if it's not going to be a viable spring? So we asked the question: Did it dry up in 2012? If it dry, well, no, no, it didn't dry up in 2012. It was wet out here. If they actually did go and look at it in that time frame in that year, then we know it's probably a very, very good spring. Yeah, interesting. Well, it dried up this year okay. for sure, okay. but it didn't in 2012 apparently. You know, according to Mike. So as far as being sustainable, that's something that does your goal as well. When you move out here, you basically want to live off the land. That's, yeah. Raise raise your meat. Yep. Produce type thing as well. Yep. Okay. Sure. You're going to following uh, kind of permaculture and agroforestry principles is the idea. Yeah. And, and I'm just learning. I'm not permaculture, uh, you know, certified or anything like that. I've never taken a class, but I've been educating myself okay. some rye oh sweet yes and that's in there deep brother <laughs> i didn't think i was ever going to see it <laughs> i see it in rows absolutely yep. good yep. deal and you know what that's a better stand than most people have right now really yes cool it's not been a good cover crop year because it was dry uh -huh. and it started raining by the time it got cooler that's right we got it in right before the first like big rain. I mean, it was like the late late October. It was like that. remember you called like me. last week of October. Yeah, and I've seen the rape a little in in a few places places too. Well, the deer been hitting that. Look at there. <laughs> That's all right by me. I'm I'm all about. I'm trying to balance con conservation with production is my goal. There's a little rape. It's tiny. Yep. Yep. You can see that's a Teletabrasca, can't you? Yes. Good deal. Yeah, the cereal rye will really surprise you like in, if we have a warm February or a really early spring, it will take off and grow like gangbusters. It'll be this tall by the 1st of April. And the, uh, what's it get, what's it designed to get to? It can get up to six or seven feet tall in a good growing year, can it? Yes. Yeah, if you, it depends what variety you plant it. I've heard that the Elbin rye can get seven feet tall if you let it. Oh yeah? And as far as um, the benefits of cereal rye, it's great for weed suppression. Yeah, that's why there's a hundred there's a hundred pounds per acre in here right now. Wow. So that's my goal was to choke out as much as I could. And you planted it just in the crop field, not on that field. Right, field. right, right, right. Field eight. Absolutely. And there's uh, like two pounds per acre of rape. I think I think we put twenty pounds overall. Okay. That was just a recommendation from the guy Mitchell. All right. Late October. Yep. It was pretty much the last week of October. Okay. Yeah, that looks really good. And uh, previous crop corn. Previous, yeah, it's been running corn. I think pretty much just corn the last five to ten years, he said. He didn't even rotate the soy because I don't know why. He said, I can't remember why he said he didn't. It's That's amazing how flat this is. I know. <laughs> well, what I was saying is, you know, with permaculture principles, we think zone one, zone two, zone one is homestead and an immediate garden. Okay. 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 And we're toying with where that's going to be either against this north wind this north windbreak which is not much of a windbreak when you go around this corner here it's a really good north windbreak and it's south facing for solar so but it's just a little lower over there so you can't see out as as well okay and so i'm um, this top area here we are uh considering a slow buyout of that 100 feet just so we have access and can function. And that's at the CRP. This is the CRP, you know, the bird strip. Yes. I guess is what Upland Bird is what it's really, right? Yeah. Designed for or yeah. just a, or just a combination of, of a filter strip, bird. CP33, so that would be Upland type stuff. Yeah. Uh, uh, mix and the grass and the wildlife habitat, but it should not be that short really. It should be taller. 
Yeah, should never have been mowed, right? So it's not doing anything as far as year-round habitat. Yeah. Yeah, it's painful. But I've heard them. A front, you know, that front 16 is giving them their habitat probably. Oh, definitely. Yeah, they're here in this area. We've done some work, do some programs on some of the gentlemen down there on the bottom of the hill next to George. And, uh, that's the Cerelius? The cattle? Cerelius? Um, Chris Cerelius. Cerelius, so we've helped them. Yeah. We've, yeah they, they border us right there on that south. Okay. I actually uh, considered asking them, you know, if they, if they wanted to, before we had cattle, if they wanted to, you know, do a, do a little bit of grazing after we get some establishment. That may be perfect. You know, just to borrow the cattle instead. Yeah. Yeah, I think, uh, and then, um, let's see, down there by the cactus mailbox. There's a gentleman we've worked with in the past. But they, uh, basically what it amounts to is, you know, they, they have the commercial cow calf operation. They calve them out and then sell the feeders. Uh huh. Type thing. Well, you, you know, you basically don't have a, a problem with erosion because of the tabletop flatness of this field. Uh huh. The only place it starts to erode is it just on the other side of that hill. Okay. There's a, there you can see it. There's the, that's the only place that, uh, it cuts in and and it's a definite there's two definite drainage ditches that kind of that run off but okay uh so i guess one of my first questions was you know the with a buyout you would just you could buy out maybe a couple acres of the strip and then you just kind of do the one whatever it is per acre per year well when's the best is there a, is there a time to do that that's best or is it prorated no matter when it is i don't know how that works to be honest with okay, you okay that's just that's, that's more of an office the farm question. service agency folks yeah uh ashley is our uh, crp technician okay i don't know how the buyout works to be honest with you okay all right um, i know it, it, you're gonna pay more when it's in the last couple years of the contract you know if you re-enroll it um I don't know if this is accurate, but it says 27 is yeah. when it comes out. Yeah, it's only two years in. Okay, so, it would so be it's good to do it now. Now, yes. right? That's that's exactly right. Yes. And the thing is, is you know, I, w what we would do would be just as beneficial, if not better. Is our our plans are not to you know run just crops anymore. It's our plan is more and more diversity. So okay, no, I see what you're saying. Let's go over and take a look. Um, George ran into this right here. That's why he was mowing it. I remember him calling in and, and getting approval. This is your your, your thistle. Uh huh. Is it the Canada thistle? This is not. I think this is musk or bull thistle. It, it is still on that noxious list. It didn't look like it had the rhizome, like um, like like can It didn't look like it spread like can because no. Canada spreads both rhizome and, and seed and yeah. seed. Yeah. So this is more. Seed. It, yeah, it's not as bad with the rhizomes, but if you dig it up, you can find the little fingers. Yeah. Okay. Now, yep. he's got some... This may be some of the warm season. Let's yeah, I saw a good stand of... There was a good stand of grass in certain areas. It was the, the big blue stem and little blue stem. Great. Yeah, you can see it kind of moving out into the woods a little bit. <coughs> so, if you let this express itself and grow... It'll be, yeah. You know, it was It was like I mean, I remember it was beautiful, and it was. It was you know, it was it was five five feet six feet tall. Awesome. So and it's in there. That provides that good habitat and food source for your upland game, rabbits, quail, and it'll deer will bed in it as well. Sure. And what uh, is there any reason to do any overseeding in this area to help? offset some of the mowing over the years or is it just let it just let it 
let it go and I would let it express itself let okay. it grow let it get as tall let it go to seed and then once you get a couple of years of it going to seed uh, then um, there's a mid contract uh, list of practices right in years four five and six on a 10-year contract strip disking uh, strip burning uh -huh. with either with a herbicide or with a match uh-huh um, if you burn with a match you really need a burn plan from yeah. a district biologist okay because yeah. that'll turn into a fire as well yeah yep but there's something about the char and the burn and the ash that this warm season grass responds to yeah i would really like to burn that's my mindset <laughs> but but uh, i understand the i understand the oh, man. process yeah it's especially right up against the You'd have to disc a line in, uh, a fire break. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And it can jump that as well. Uh-huh. Well, um, like I said, with a, with a not without a very strategic plan. Definitely. And, and if, if you wait 10 minutes, the wind will change on you on a ridge like this. Mm. But yeah. yeah. And I had a, a friend I recently met this past year. He's a pretty dialed in dude. And, he said, I was talking about the thistle, and he said, just use buckwheat. When it comes up, plant buckwheat next to it, and it'll choke that out. I was like, what do you think about that? You ever choked heard, out thistle with buckwheat? I have not. I've heard of it. I've heard of folks uh, prescribing that, but um, I think a smother crop like cereal rye uh -huh. can can work on the, the invasives well uh -huh. uh, but, but you wouldn't want to do that in in the in the planted strip or i mean no and really uh thistle doesn't like shade so this once it gets up and starts growing it's going to shade out a lot of the thistle but the mowing opened it opened it up yeah. to the thistle to grow yeah and you know to some folks that are understand production agriculture that's nothing but weeds it's weeds yeah. We yeah, yeah, yeah. look fat yeah yep 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 Wildlife isn't pretty, right? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> it's not a golf course. Yeah. I wouldn't. I wouldn't recommend any overseeding of that. Nothing. I mean, some yeah. Some folks they like to put clover in that, uh -huh. and just training with Mark Bennett, our uh, DNR district biologist. Mm -hmm. He's like, you're mixing two different management strategies there. You have a warm season and a cool season. When you want to burn the cool season, when you want to burn, like, I'm sorry, when you want to burn the warm season, your cool season's in there just starting to grow, like in April, May. Uh huh. So you're you're destroying the cool season. Uh huh. When you're burning the warm season, okay. you can't have two different grasses together. It doesn't work. He said you need to you need to have patches, warm season here, cool season here, and okay. manage it accordingly. Well, speaking of grasses, um, you know, like I said, this front north end either here or here hopefully will be homestead infrastructure barn okay. you know zone one i guess they would call it in permaculture the, the homestead plus the the immediate food production around okay. and then on down the south at some point i'd like to see a a, a point where it's uh, I'm I'm going to see a grassland, I think. Awesome. And the south drop off down there, a pond, if that's a possibility. Mm -hmm. The potential is there. This is uh, you're right on the break of the limestone sandstone, uh, the Maringo area, and then the um, let's see, Valine. The, the it's it's. It's, it would be a probably a six out of ten on whether or not it would hold water. Yeah, you'd have to have a soil investigation done to see uh, how shallow rock is, how gravelly it is, uh -huh. and then when how deep you hit refusal. Um, refusal. A refusal what? would be like bedrock. Okay, yeah. so you hit the hit the hit the, hit the minerals. Huh? Now, um, generally, uh, the way that NRCS designs ponds, you want a valley. And then you you basically dam you tie both valley valleys together you basically a valley with two hills and you tie, you tie both hills together with a dam. Uh -huh. You put a keyway uh -huh. in. Right. Keyways like like Legos. 
you know they it would fit like that um you could pack dirt on top of dirt to get that that lock right okay and that's where the that's where the expensive part comes in because you have to have a track hoe and you have to dig that keyway out and then you have to get good clay and put down in that keyway and uh -huh. yeah. knuckle it all together dean and marshall yes that's the that's, i wrote that name down yeah last yeah. time so that's still the person to, yes. to talk to before you do any pond stuff yes if we get into a equip application and we get funded um and we put a, we plan a pond now all the planning criteria for a pond uh i'd have to look at the site and get the information to dina and see if it would you know if that would be a good the soil type um she would look at the characteristics of the soil type i'd basically snap a picture when we go mm -hmm. over there mm -hmm. of the site mm -hmm. and she may say just by looking at the soil type and looking at the the uh, the actual picture and the physical characteristics, it probably be a four out of ten. She may say. Right. Um, sometimes folks utilize a private soil consultant, the mm -hmm. ones that do septics. Mm -hmm. um, there's a couple in this county, actually, in Orange okay. County. Um, uh, one I think worked for our agency years ago. And basically, they can tell you whether or not it's going to work. You know, okay. They do that for a living. Gotcha. Yeah. So I guess in with permaculture principles, you're supposed to have a, a water body on the highest point and a water body on the lowest point. So you have I see. gravity mm -hmm. working in your favor. Mm -hmm. And then you have the holding tank on the, on the lowest part. To catch. Yeah. Hmm. Water, water. And, and I would be interested to see the spring. Yeah, Maybe. it's it's right. It's like just right in there. <coughs> Excuse me. There's actually uh, one, two, three. I've identified four on our property here where where it's popping out of the rocks. Great. And Jay's got at least two on that other twenty-two. Okay. <coughs> Yeah, and it's just right over the, it's really close to the top of the hill. I was surprised. I'm, I'm wondering if it's hitting a crack and coming up a little bit, or if it's just purely running through the rocks. I'm a little wary about this. This spring's a little close to the field. For, that's a lot of Roundup for a lot of years. <clears throat> And there's water samples, uh, so, you know, yeah. livestock suitability. Gotcha. Uh, it's a pretty good pressure it runs over a waterfall down there over the I hill. I hear it down there. Yeah. A little something on that, see? Look how fast it's going. Yeah. We've really not had rain in what, five, six days? A, a good heavy rain? It doesn't. The rain doesn't affect it. I've never seen rain affect it yet. Hmm. You know what I mean? As far as recharging it, recharging it, it takes a long time to recharge. It's a good spring. That's what I think. It's as close as it is to the surface. I mm -hmm. think it's hitting a crack and coming up. That's my. That's my thought. Maybe I'm. I don't know. It, it naive, but it'd be hard. To... Yeah, it almost looks like a rise. There's a good gallon per minute. You can hear it down there. 
Oh, it pushes, man. I'm telling you. I mean, you can see it right here. You can kind of look at the, the riffle, you know. Yeah. When did when did you see it dry? What month? October? <sighs> no, it was still running strong through July. It was probably mid-August through the mid you know through September that that month through there mm -hmm. I could probably I could look back and and uh, look at my actual dates and know exactly with my camera footage mm -hmm. uh, basically uh, in this area we have developed springs that were like this like for instance the boy you mentioned earlier the Cresselius mm -hmm. and one was good and one was not real good and what they did with a spring that wasn't 100% year round, mm -hmm. they put two 1,000 gallon holding tanks in to catch it and get that, you know, 2,000 gallon mm -hmm. didn't last a long time with 20 or 30 mama cows. Uh -huh. But in a dry spell like that, it would get you through for at least a month, you know, because they drink about 20 gallon a day. So 400 gallon, they're all drinking. Yeah. The only problem with these springs is there's not a whole lot of fall. Yeah. But uh, there's enough to, you know, get down. And put tanks in somehow. Oh, and put tanks in. Put tanks in, like a holding tanks. Right, in the ground, you're talking about. Yes. And then ah. put, um, like, some kind of a electrical pump and push it to where you need it. Electrical, huh? Yeah. That's all I know. It's on the grid. You could run enough solar to get you. Yeah, you could. Up on the edge, it's just you lose a little bit of your energy coming, coming, you know, trying to come to a battery, uh, you know, down to the pump. But right here. Uh, yes. Okay. Right there. And when I say not enough fall, not enough fall to get a a ram pump working. You know the. That takes a lot of flow. You, you need a lot. You need some heavy pressure to get water to go back uphill. Yeah, no doubt. Like a, a moving river. Yeah. But if you've got enough head, you know, with, with the water, you can make it work. That's... Doesn't matter. Only when it's run off. Big crevice in it. Yes, this, this is a nice stand of hickory right here. Absolutely. And uh, there's a couple other places where there's a pretty good stand. But oak's a little thin. Of course, they cut this pre hard, pre pretty hard. Uh, yeah. I don't know how many years ago, but. Yeah, you'd probably benefit uh, to have some TSI done and go to look, basically deaden those vines up there, those grapevines. They're like boa constrictors. They, uh, yeah, they strangle the trees. I'm sure Janet went over that with you. Yeah. To, to... Yep. Yep. So, uh, and I know we found uh, some tree of heaven. Really? Yeah. Definitely. I can show you to you. There's a, there's a, there's a road we'll, we can walk down, but, okay. um, yeah. And then my son's, he identified some along this, the uh, east border down there. He said, there's a lot of it here, Dad. He said, you can scrape it and smell it. Mm -hmm. It smells sweet. Well, let's look at what else we got. Yep. So, uh, I guess you want to you walk over the field down to where, I, where the potential pond site would be? Absolutely, yeah. 
that. I think there's different schools of philosophy out there. Some people say it's just that winter coat coming in and that summer coat. Uh huh. You know, like a like cows. You know, sometimes uh, certain cows have thicker hair than other cows certain times of the year. Um, I did hear that there was an EHD outbreak somewhere in parts of Indiana. Yeah. Right. And, uh, I think every part of every state, every area of the Midwest has it sometimes. You know, every other year. Yeah. Or so. All the deer that I've seen so far look really healthy, except Good. for just. You know, it looks strong and <coughs> big. I found there's one spike buck I see. Yeah. And my brother-in-law said that's the one you want to take because that's that's poor genetics. If it, if it's not if it's got a long horn, it's not starting to make tines yet. That uh, if you want to if you want to breed your your or call your herd for good you know good racks. Yeah. He said, take those and take the spotted ones and take the albino. If you want the gene pool to be strong. Well, you definitely have an abundance of posts, fence posts with all these cedars. Oh, yeah. On this farm. Wow. <laughs> yeah, and there's a good. lot of cedar. That's natural. You know, like, there's no treatment to it. Right. And uh, there's pretty good heart growth. Mm -hmm. You know, the red part of that, yep. uh, of that cedar. That's what's not going to rock. Right. Now, so many they have to be times, certain. They have to be how big around before you get a. Can you make a. I would go on a corner, uh, six to eight inches. On six to eight inches. And yeah. And line posts, you know, four to five. Four to five on line posts, mm -hmm. six to eight on a corner. Okay. I know we got a couple of nice walnut trees along this line. <clears throat> well, that cereal rye looks great. Yeah? That's nuts. Good. That's good to hear. Drill worked out. Good deal. Yeah, as as as, <laughs> as sorry as it looked, beat up, <laughs> it put it down. I forgot to bring my spade shovel. I always like to dig, uh, you know, dig up a good, uh -huh. uh, big block of soil, eight inches, ten inches down. I used a, uh, I used a um, uh, soil sample. We call it drill that you take soil samples with oh the probe or the a oil. probe yeah i got borrowed a probe to do it when mm -hmm. i did it and i took it from 15 different places good so i think i got a pretty good representation with that haney test good it recommended half grass half legume with other broad leaves mixed in brassica so you know that's and i, I guess i was planning on uh, a a frost seeding mm -hmm. Do so you just throw that in with the rye? Yes. You That's how you... On a legume or a small, tiny... Um, bluegrass works good. Um, Timothy works good. Uh, but your clovers, uh, your your red clover and your ladino clover can be frost seeded. We recommend any time from December 1 to the last day of February. December I, 1, huh? Yeah. Now, frost seeding, I thought that's whenever the ground was first starting to thaw around March. You, Is that... you want the freezing and the thawing to occur many times. Okay. Because it's a honeycomb effect. Expanding, contracting. Right, right. And that's, it. basically when it freezes, um, you have cracks in the soil. Okay. Uh -huh, right. When it unthaws, those cracks basically swell up again. Uh -huh. So the, the, the legume seed, those tiny little seeds, uh -huh. they find their way in those cracks. Yeah, okay. So mostly... Uh, so the clover definitely can be frost seeded. Mm -hmm. What about uh, like, is it, is it, can you do uh, turnips and tillage radish at that point too? Or no, no, those are winter annuals. So you plant them in August, September. Oh, okay. So that's going to be a yeah, winter like, annual. Like so I think, but you can plant early radishes like in sp early springtime, right? I mean, if you just I've want. I've never seen anybody have success with it in this area. Oh, really? Yeah. I'm just thinking of gardening, you know, like mm -hmm. that's the first thing you plant. And as soon as you can get, get something in the ground, you plant your radishes in early spring. You know, I was just wondering why that would be different for us. These are like, those are edible radishes. Oh. These, these would be daikon radishes for cover crop. Okay. And I think you can do it. Uh, they just don't get a lot of growth on them because they like short, um, they like short days and long nights. You okay. know, the daikon radishes and then the, the cover crop turnips and such. They, they basically like to be planted in the fall, and then they complete their growing cycle before, um, like, December, January. Right, 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 right. Yeah. Okay. Whereas cereal rye, it is a, it's a winter annual, but it doesn't winter kill. Okay? Right. So you plant it in, 
September, October, and then it doesn't get a lot of growth on it in the fall, and then come spring, it's a racehorse. It takes off yeah. in April, and yeah, it's amazing how quick it grows. Well, that's my. I guess the next question is, you know, whenever, it, whenever it's time to, depending on what the goal is. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming I'm, I'm going to roll it, mow it, something whenever, right, whenever the head comes on. Is that the or well, or yeah. let it go and and let it. If you want to build organic material, um, its root structure does that below the soil. Right now, the amount of biomass that it puts on. If you want to keep feeding your soil, roll it down and, and let it be recycled into the soil. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I mean, that's what I was thinking was was, was the you know, crimp and roll, but that's something I don't have. I guess you just that's not something you rent from soil and water like a drill. Jack, is Jackson County just purchased one. Oh, really? Yes. And so, that, but that's not just Jackson County. You can... I'm not sure. Um, I, was afraid, I was afraid Crawford County was going to charge me for being in Orange County, you know? Well, there's a Marengo address here, right? I'm not sh sure, actually. You're close enough. I, I, okay. I, I was pretty confident that they would allow you to do that. Did they charge you an out-of-county fee? No. Good. Good. Uh, now, Jackson County, uh, Brownstown. Yeah. That's a little further yeah. to, to drag it in. Yeah. But, you know, whatever it takes, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to... Uh, I can I, get you the contact info. You can call yeah. and check. Yeah. Because I guess that's the, what I need to do. I mean, I, I mean, I might leave a little just to harvest a little rye but, mm -hmm. but uh, um if, you, if your goal is to build soil health you planted the right thing yeah no doubt about it um now if you're wanting to do a plant a forage crop in here to start your hay or to start your your grasses uh -huh. to get established you know and when you bring cows in you start putting fence up or you bring sheep in or grazing ruminants uh -huh. um <laughs> it sometimes takes two to three years to get that established exactly yes yeah. i was that's pasture. you know I, I i guess eventual goal so if i did a prairie okay would that be the beginning of establishing that or is that is that not good i mean it's not optimal forage obviously but it's i like mean it's, prairie it's, grass? it's but it's prairie i mean that's what buffalo ate right yeah i mean is that not is that well that would be your warm season grasses okay your blue stems okay switch grass indian grass that type of thing okay so what, what a lot of our grazing specialists recommend, Steve, is they recommend 25% of your grazing acres grazing acres be in that mix, okay. that warm season mix. Okay. 25% is in yes. warm grasses. Yeah. All right. Okay. And then from there, you just diversify and, and put... The, the rest of it, like, would be in your cool season because that matches up with this this area. You know, your clovers and your orchard grasses. Okay. Type thing. And then when those, you know, it's kind of like a bell curve. When, when you had the summer slump of the cool season grasses, uh -huh. then you'd turn them into your warm season grasses because they're growing about the same time corn would grow. Corn is a warm season grass. Right. Tropical grass. Isn't it? Mm -hmm. And it lets that cool season mix rest. Uh-huh. Yeah. I, I've been to a couple of grazing conferences the last couple of years, and I tell you, Steve, I am sold. I am going to dedicate 20% of my pastures to that warm season mix. All right. So in it, so thinking about that, you know, so warm season mix, you know, I'm just trying, trying to think of what to do with all of this, you know. <laughs> well, you have to remember your goal. You know, you if you want to do the prescribed grazing, the rotational grazing, I would start to get your get your um, your grazing mixes get them established uh -huh. to get them growing right that way when the cows or whatever you plan on having they come in here and start picking the roots are established and they don't pull the roots out of the ground yeah right and you know sometimes the the prairie grass that you brought up steve that takes even longer to establish that yeah. takes three to four well it depends it depends how fertile your ground is and how you treat it you know mm -hmm. um some some folks you talk to claim that you know it takes some removal of the weed competition out of the of the prairie grass yeah i know they a lot of times they kill everything before they start a prairie yeah, yeah. just just to but uh take the competition out yeah uh well we can walk on over the hill here okay kind of see so which one steve did you drill it did you drill it like <laughs> straight 
uh, actually, it's 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 mostly. There's a slant right here. Yeah, it you can. Like it's going from corner to yeah, corner. Yeah, it's it is mostly all right. Because, and I didn't do it. It was my neighbor down here. Carrie yeah. has the Kubota uh, tractor. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> honestly, it got dark. And he was he was running around in the dark and couldn't see much. So he said, "I don't know. I just started doing circles." I see. <laughs> you know, he said, I don't know. Okay. I, but I haven't seen any any bear spots yet. No. So he did better than he thought. Yeah. yeah. And obviously, there's other stuff. That, what is that? Um, that's a lot. Of, I see a lot of that coming up. It almost looks like a dock. That's that's a winter annual. Or plantain or something like that. Uh I was thinking about at the bottom of here. Okay. But you know, obviously that's the the drop list, but I was thinking about repairing a repairing planting the since that's a natural water source through there, but Yeah. If if it would I mean there's your two there's your hill. In your valley. Aha. Uh -huh. you know? You're thinking about the pond. That'd be a more logical place for a pond. Yeah. Now the watershed would be this field. Right. So. Hmm. That, that's one. That's a lot more logical place for a pond than that south end of that field. Let's go over there and look. As the water sits down in here. It just okay. sits. <laughs> Nib nibbling that fresh green grass. <laughs> you know, I was just thinking at the base of this hill, but, but I don't know what that. There's no va There's no hills in no valley, but yeah. And, and, and some folks don't think like to do Steve. They like to dig a just dig a pond, a yeah, a pothole pond. Uh huh. Yeah. I, I see those holding, you know, some places, and some places it's like, wow, you know, there's just a big bear hole. There. Right. That's what, you know, I'd like to avoid that if all possible. Yeah, because you spend money, you want something in return. So it's more logical is that little runoff valley there, huh? Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> my, my uh huh. And actually, it is the lowest spot on the property. Yeah. When you, when you think about the you know, permaculture that, principles, you know, you want that pond would come up, you know, the water, would yeah, come up, back water up that little uh -huh. draw. It'd uh -huh. be a, it'd be a pretty long dam, a wide dam, shall I think? Mm-hmm. That would be. So you got this isn't classified right here, right? Or are you gonna no. put it in classified? Nothing. This okay. is all whatever we want except for the strip. Okay. Everything else is uh, blank so, slate. Like you and Janet walked that and looked at. No, this is this is this is Cresselius. Okay. Probably that's not. south south that way. The, oh, that's right. The so border of the field the is. The woods is over here. Yes, this is the woods. Okay. You guys. And we didn't walk this woods really. We just walked. We walked that tree line down there, and then we walked up to <coughs> James because. Um, so it's basically compacting the soil, building road base. So overuse of the disc can compact soil, and if you dig it up, you can see the plate-like structures, the compaction. However, he didn't really plow it deep, so you didn't he didn't break up the the soil structure below that compacted layer. Uh huh. And you know, he didn't put anhydrous ammonia on it, and hydrous ammonia kills worms. He Obviously. did not put in hydrous ammonia. No, you do you know what? Do you, what is? What Probably do you use? Uh, urea, uh, granular fertilizer, urea, oh, or yeah. ammonium nitrate, or something like that. Okay, yeah. right. Mm -hmm. and yeah, I don't know release, what to... slow release type nitrogen um, spray. Do you know what he sprayed? No, I don't. I mean, what, what you would normally, you know, after you plant corn and it's six inches high, you'd spray spray glyphosate, wouldn't you? Or, or not necessarily? Uh, not necessarily. No? Yeah. Not, it depends on what kind of corn he was planting. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Well, you know, like I said, I was surprised at the, at the biology. 
He didn't plant crops in here because it was seepy. He said it was too wet, huh? Yeah, so he just, he stopped. He stopped, you know, right on that ridge and he just said this, he just didn't plant. Even if he didn't even go to the hundred feet, I'm surprised he didn't. Maybe he just couldn't get in there, you know? I don't know, maybe it was springtime and it was just too wet to get into or? Yeah. I don't know. I want to take a picture of this. Over to here, hmm. you know, in dry times, you know, or where, say, for instance, you wouldn't have a lot of watershed coming into this. Uh huh. Using a solar pump, and instead of having it just, you know, run down into the woods and right. not really be wasted, but. Right. Well, I know that those, these five or six springs that pop out of this hill feeds the cider fork watershed. It turns into cider fork creek or mm -hmm. whatever. Mm -hmm. So, okay. you know, I don't know how, <laughs> you know, how much you throw off the balance of everything if you divert, you know, well, spring for, you know, I don't, I, I'm just thinking about the conserv or the, uh, not conservation the, the aspect of it. Ecological. The ecological. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But you know that once a pond gets full, you have a primary and emergency spillway, so it's still going to overflow. Right, it's still go, it's still yeah. going to be flowing, yeah. and it's still going to be going into, the, it's still going to be feeding the same watershed. Yeah, so it's you just, just capture a small amount of it and contain except it. Except the waterfall goes away, because <laughs> yeah, that's true. I mean, we'll, we'll walk by it, and the aesthetics of that thing. I mean, that's like one of the selling points of this whole place. I is can to, believe that. You know, I mean, I hate to. Do... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like there's something to, something about that. But I get it, man. I'm spring fed pond kidding me yeah. you know yeah. i know i would want one too <sighs> yeah i mean it, this is a pretty decent location you know we're gonna have to look at the soil the characteristics maybe walk down there and see if we see any karst openings um but as far as watershed the amount of watershed coming to it it might surprise me there may be you know more like three or four acres coming into it uh-huh yeah, it's got some potential, I think. Well, um, yeah. Well, uh, we'll walk this way because you know, that's just to the corner of the property. Doesn't because there's a. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. I believe that. Mm -hmm. But he said he said it's kind of a seep on that east side. He said I can't. I, it's always the last thing I plant because it's that. He's it's just kind of. He just kept saying it's kind of a seep, and it's probably exactly what it is. It's yeah. a. It's a seat. So that'd be even better to if you dig down in and let it fill up from the bottom. That'd be nice, huh? Yeah. yeah. There might have been a pond here years ago. I mean, you kind of see a little bit of the dam. Yeah, there's right there that there's a little ridge built up there in there. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Sixty or seventy foot wide dam. Yeah. I would take away from your field. Well, that's you know, water is more important than the you field. Have water. Yeah. Shallow rock here. Oh, digging down. Yeah. Yeah. Like, say, for instance, if they put the dam uh, right at the woods edge, you know, how much of that are they going to hit? Uh huh. It's sandstone. Yeah, that's a good sign. It's not yeah. limestone. Okay. Um, I don't see any other rock. Um, that's 
pretty good water there still right there. There is. There is. It's shallow rock. Yeah, how long has it been since we've had rain? Let's see here. Uh, last week, Thursday, I talked to a boy that was going to haul manure, and he said that we had an extended dry and warm outlook. So that would have been Tuesday. I think it rained last Tuesday. Last Tuesday. So since. six days. That's pretty good water yeah. standing there. So. And it's all the way along that rock. Where's that? Right there. Oh yeah? And right over there. Alligator type bark. Males on the other side. Oh. Your sins are all gone. Right. Where's the, uh, where's the other one? It's dead. Right there next to the side. Oh, I see, yeah. It's got, it's got a little bit of life to on a fork. Oh yeah, it does, doesn't it? Yeah. I tell you, there's a big patch of pawpaws uh, down in Jay's Valley down really? there. Oh, yeah. It's a ton of them down there. I've been studying on pawpaws pretty hard because that's going to be part of the process as a, like I said, an agroforestry system somehow up in there. Pawpaws, uh, you know, persimmons, maybe chestnuts, some kind of a, Sweet. some kind of a cash crop. You know, something that's a little, gives a little bit of production. Yeah. Other than just balancing kind of conservation and production. Absolutely. Yeah. I just heard an interview with the Agroforestry podcast from out of University of Missouri, and they were talking to an NRCS person, yeah. and they said that they were, um, you guys are doing more with um, elderberry, that you were doing block plantings of elderberry, and now you're starting to to look at pawpaws as a as part of something you might start subsidizing, like a mast crop. Yeah, we're, we're learning. Yeah, and that's where, that's where she was like, we're just, she said, <laughs> we're just now starting to learn. But we, they have been, we have been doing elderberry, she said. It would be interesting to see if uh, it would work in a, like agroforestry. I know it works down south in a lot of those uh, pine plantings. They run cattle in yeah. between. Mm -hmm. And the cows don't mess with the trees. Yep. So it's, you, you kind of get my overall scheme is is that eventually there is a it's it's polyculture mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. making every acre of this land productive that's right yeah and balancing with conservation that's my you know it's you know i don't need to be a production farmer that's not this is a uh, you know passion project for me that's and, cool and so i just want to see it just be amazing yeah it's a journey. Yes. Steve. I yes. Long-term journey. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing how many descendants are out there. Where's the other persimmon? Right here. Right here in front of us. Okay. That's a persimmon there too, that shaggy bark there. I'm, I've been known to get my dogwoods and my persimmons mixed up. Well, that's awfully craggly though, that's that's not a dogwood, isn't it? I don't think so. So that's all, yep, and this is what I was talking about, it looks like, I think that was a... Yeah, it's pretty heavy in here. I remember seeing it when it was perfect. It takes over the, the forest floor and it shoots everything out. <sighs> and, then... and so the the only you know <coughs> management or tempering is just you get you have to spray it, huh? As far as we know, yeah. The people in the field, uh, in the, in the forestry field, that's what they're telling us. Uh, Grass-specific herbicide. 
but uh, Southern Indiana Purdue Ag Center up at Cusco, mm -hmm. um, they are utilizing goats to mm. control invasives. Mm -hmm. Now, whether or not they eat Japanese silk grass, uh -huh. I know when we had cows in the woods years ago, we didn't have Japanese silk grass, but we had a really thin woods uh -huh. as well. Well, this is close enough to the edge. You could probably... This I guess it, fence it. Yeah. Yep. That would be interesting. And with today's technology of fence, electro fence netting. Yeah. And that's what they used at SIPAC. They would take a like a skid loader with a, uh, almost like a, a, a chopper. They would chop up all the brush and the little saplings, and then they would make a fence row to put the electric fence netting down through. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, six foot wide, four foot wide, mm -hmm. and then they would string that up and move them in certain quadrants mm -hmm. every month. Yeah. yeah. So it was kind of a, an or, not really organic, but it was more of a mechanical way of doing right. it with right. animals. Right. What that down there? Right. You're talking about that thing there? Um, that's a stump. Yeah. yeah. Stump. Okay. It looks kind of odd. That's crazy. I never. That's the first time I've seen that. It's a hunting stool. I bet. I bet so. Huh. Well, that makes sense. <laughs> I've never seen that something like that before. Got the whole valley here. Mm-hmm. Looking at the whole valley. Look at all those beach holding on. Yeah, anything that leaves on it right There's now. There's a lot of beach in there. story beach. They're probably 10, 12 years old. And they're only that big. They just don't grow because they're in the understory. But they do suck up a lot of water. Oh, yeah. You can stand a poplar in here. I haven't seen a lot of maple, though. If you ever no. Get into the it's maple syrup. There's maple right there. There's a, uh, along the east border down there, there's a more, uh, I think there's more maple along there. July, August, September, October, it's really going to, uh, it's going to draw down. Yeah. You can back water all the way up to that where it starts, where the swale starts. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. The pumping situation is is, but even for drinking water, if we were living here, to be able to collect five gallon drums and. You know, to have a clean source. Sure. But it's not really practical for livestock, etc. cetera. Yeah. And years ago, when hogs and cattle were in this woods, they'd come down here and they would get their drink. Mm -hmm. And they'd make a wall. Yeah. And uh, our nature conservancy guy that we walked with early on, he said, definitely you can tell there's grazing in here from all the ferns. He said, you can tell this woods was grazed. And he said, because of the ferns. I can't remember why. He said that was uh, the reason, but most of the woods were grazed. Mm -hmm. Acorns, cattle, and and hogs love acorns. Mm -hmm. And when you cut a tree, you'll see the mineral, especially in their areas where they just kind of lounge. Or pre so to speak. Usually, in the manure um, of the animals, they. It can cause, especially, is it poplar? I think it's poplar and maple. It'll cause uh, colors in the, and they call it mineral in the in the grain of the timber when you harvest it. Wow. Is this thing going This is a, it's a it's a little bay. You know what I mean? It. I don't understand. It does stay. It's. Water all the time, but it's not like water's coming back up through it. It's got to be, it's got to be coming out of it, right? Why is that sheen there? Huh? Why is that sheen? You see that? Why is that what? You see that sheen? 
Oh, I do see that sheen. It's kind of hard to... It's got to be at the right angle. Yep, I do see the sheen. Hmm. You don't think that's backing up in there, do you? There's no way it could. It's... You, th you think it's maybe like an oxbow? I thought it was just like a little, uh, you know, like it would be like a bay. You know what I mean? I think if it's dropped down just a little bit, if it's below the, I don't know. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, it's not it's breaking out of here. It's running. It's coming this way. Yeah. Don't be. If you get your shovel up there, I bet you'll find another seat. Mm-hmm. Interesting. I didn't think that was the case there. Hmm. Here's a, call that one spring number two. Cranks back into the... I'm trying to dig out to find out what's coming from where. Okay. That's falling good, too. Mm-hmm. I think that third one's probably the biggest producer. I don't know. That, that first one up top was just falling just about as good as that third one. But, yeah, water flows through here all the time. There's only one place where... Years ago, that that's, that black is eighth defecation. Aphid defecation. Aphid defecation. Yeah. What kind of tree is that? Maple. Maple tree? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was. I always thought that was a, uh, like a fungus. A fungus, or, or if there was a lightning strike, or something. It's like, does that burn? Or is it black? It does look like a burn, but you can see the little holes on it. Yeah, it's Ooh. definitely coated, and it? that maple's coated with. And she may say it was something else. Huh. But she, she, I, she's only one time that black, what that black was. Another one right there. Jeez, what is it? Another one down there. Where's, where's the other one? Right there. Uh huh. Yeah. The whole grove of them. One right down there. That's the mama tree, though. This is mama. This is the mama tree? Yep. This double one right here? Yep. Yeah, I want to see it on it, and the one next to it as well. Look at it, all these shoots. Yeah. Oh, God, you guys got to get your, your handle on this. Mm-hmm. So a sneak attack with a... Rob, ro, ro, or what do you call the, the what kind of what's the chemical? I don't remember off the top of my head now. Um, uh, not tore on tore on. You got to cut. Um, I don't make a lot of chemical recommendations. She me she mentioned it in the in her recommendations, so I'm sure that'll be on the written written plan. Good. But I also have it on the video. Good. So good. But yeah. It's uh, that's it's news to me. She said uh, you can tell uh, in the winter time it just looks like an angry tree. She said, <laughs> <laughs> you "Look at it, it kind of looks like a." Yeah, yeah like <laughs> me leave. You know as well as I do, there's nothing out there that he can do other than cut down on the wildlife because the wildlife will bring the ticks in. Yeah. So some people, I mean, I got a good friend. He was a marine. He tells me, "Don't Lee, don't kill possums." Eat, yeah, the possums, yeah. Yeah. So did. encourage possums. Encourage possums. But man, they're hard on my chickens. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I just pulled a dead one out of my, uh, this morning, out of the roost. And it's just, and Barb said, Steve, is the head, was the head but chewed off of it? He said, it's that possum. Yes, absolutely. Uh, they're harder on them than coons are. Yeah. Weasels, chicken hawks, foxes. Mm -hmm. It's the possums. Mm-hmm. I mean, I... I probably killed 20 possums around me. And I was telling Ian this when we went up to the IU Purdue football game. He's like, what are you doing? I'm like, I don't know if I believe that. Just because it's on the internet doesn't mean it's true. About <laughs> possums that eating the ticks? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, is there scientific research I, I haven't seen anything beyond the Facebook post about as far as ticks, you know. Mm -hmm. 
possums eating ticks off. Mm -hmm. Guineas are good, but you know they'll they won't last three days out here. Bobcats. Yeah, and owls. Oh, chicken hawks, coyotes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's a lot of diversity out here with wildlife. There is. But uh, I mean, you... how to balance that? I want to en encourage that, but I don't. You know, I want to. Uh... Look at all those birds out there. Yeah. And you know they're after the bugs and the worms that the uh, are are coming to the top of the soil mm -hmm. of the surface because of your your cover crop. We've gotten away from cover crop. Hey, cover crop's nothing new. Our grandpas did it yeah. years oh, yeah. ago. Yeah. And we got away from it because big agriculture didn't like it. That's right. Big agriculture like buy my chemicals, spray it on your field, mm. and you'll have clean fields and clean crops. That's right. Everything will look real pretty. Mm-hmm. When we picked, we picked up a, a quilter or delivered a quilter in to, to this uh, couple in Kansas, believe it or not. We loaded up a really? big, old, big, huge quilter. It stuck. It was it stuck out the end of the truck. Right. I was worried about it, but anyway, we drove to <laughs> into like three hours into Kansas from Missouri, and and I sat out there and talked to them farmers, and he and they were all talking about, boy, did you see that 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 so and so's crop down there? It was the prettiest, perfectly. It was. He, they were just, you know, that's what their goal is, is to make it perfect. Farmers like clean fields, and that really struck me. That that you know, so somebody gets a buys a hundred acres and starts putting ugly cover crops in, then you get to you get turned your you get snuffed with you get snuffed at the coffee shop, so and that's the component. reason. I've I've been listening and listening and listening to all of this stuff about the people trying to make this movement happen, and it's the social pressure. It's like doctors trying to do something natural. Everybody else looks at them like, <coughs> "What are you doing? Alternative medicine? What?" What yeah. are you doing over yeah. here? You know, yeah. and that's the same thing with you the cover better, with the cover crop farmer. It's the exact same. The medical system and the and the agricultural system is the exact same system. It's run by chemicals and pharmaceutical. The chemi chemical industry and the pharmaceutical industry is the same industry. It's the same industry, and it's the same lobbying. Everything's the same. It's just the only difference is the farmers and the the farmers are the pawns in the in the chemical industrial complex, agriculture, and the doctors are the pawns in the pharmaceutical complex. They 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 have the same role as far as pushing chemicals. Or, I'm I am starting to see a lot of that. We you know we talk to we, we talk to different farmers, just my wife and I, and we talk to folks that say, "Do you have grass fed beef?" Yeah, we do. We do have grass fed beef. Mm -hmm. Do you have organic beef? No, we don't have organic beef. You know, we use a lot of manure. We buy a lot of turkey manure. Yeah. But those turkey, that manure is not organic just because it's natural manure. The turkeys weren't fed organic corn. Right. So the whole organic thing, I'm just, the mm. jury's still out on that with it, me. It's, uh, organic agriculture is just, I mean, they're still tilling because they can't, they, they're they tilling to control, because, weeds. to control weeds because you can't use, so what do they do? They till. So their organic agriculture is just as bad for the, you know, environmentally, for as far as carbon and releasing all the carbon. You know, you can't keep you can't keep carbon. In, the goal is to keep the carbon in the in ground the soil. or get it down, draw it down. Every time you, psh, yeah, dude, it volatilizes away. Yep. So it's. I uh, think there's a happy medium. I think that that using that cereal rye as a smother crop on these organic guys. They they lit, they swear by it. Mm -hmm. They just absolutely swear by it. They're like it's great. It suppresses weeds. Mm -hmm. You tr you you plant your corn right into it, yep. and it just the corn is strong enough to pop up through it, but the rest of the weeds are not. Right. Well, so so nothing about ticks, I guess. No, no, I mean, not I, that I'm aware. Not, of. There's nothing you can even think of as far as a management plan to, to now, reduce the amount. Uh, there was a guy in Kentucky years ago that where he was putting this thing uh, that you put on cows into like a protein block, mm -hmm. and he was selling it, and uh, it was like um, it was an it was an it was parasitical is what it was, and uh, it basically um, it was the same concept of the deer licking the uh, insecticide 
or the Iona 4 or whatever it is, um, uh, and then getting in their system, mm -hmm. getting in their blood, mm -hmm. and then the ticks suck the blood and die. Mm -hmm. Now, that never really caught on hmm. because uh, they were like $50 box. Oh, <laughs> right. Now, you know, you're eating that, you're eating that meat. Yeah, plus okay. you're putting a chemical into your, into your population. That doesn't seem like a... Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, it's... I think it was, what was the name of the chemical? It was Mowing there. the grass is <laughs> about the only thing you can do if you want to, don't want to walk through it, yeah. you know? Yeah. Well, down in the valley, they've been living down there 20 years, and they've got it pretty much, you know, they, it's a, it's pretty, man, you know, not manicured, but it's, you know, they keep it, the valley is, is, is like a, their lawn, you know, so they, it's not, uh, they don't have a lot of ticks down there. But man, when I walked up here from their place, and I just walked through the strip to the field to look. Covered. I was covered. I was covered. You know, so I envisioned gra or you know grassland with with paths, you know, paths cut through it for for enjoying it. Sure. So that's that's been my vision. I keep coming back to is grassland, grassland. You know, especially from the mid or the. Far at the south, two thirds, I envisioned in a, you know, blowing seven and ten foot grasses. Yeah. So I don't know. I think if you want to graze, I think there's there's, I'm working with a producer that's he's kind of dumping his corn soybean one corn soybean track, and he's once he's him and his dad are big cattle farmers, and they. He's like, I want to be able to graze year round. Okay. And he goes to the grazing conference, the same ones that I go to. And he wants to, uh, and then I think it's going to work, you know, unless we have real thick snow or iced over snow where the cows can't break through the snow to get mm -hmm. the grass. But running cool season, majority year, running the warm season, native grasses, uh, when the cool season peter out. So July, August, September. And then coming back. Uh, with your winter annuals in October, November, December, maybe in January. And then, uh, like, having your annual ryegrass and your cereal rye for March, April. So there may be a February, a month, maybe half a month, where you're feeding hay. Mm -hmm. There's, yep, there's, a, there's, there's a thought a, there's there. A... Yeah. Now, grass-fed, you know, I, I think there's some, there's some cattle that can be grass-fed. And it can be done in an economical way, but the big, tall, rangy beef cows that, that are out there today, they're just, they, they're the new wave of lean. They're the new wave of ribeye area, tall, long. You know, the old style Herefords, the old style Angus, what they call low line today, mm. low, low line stuff, Dexter, okay. um, those breeds. They, they can be the grass fed, you know, where they finish out at 900 pounds to 1,000 pounds. But, you know, today's beef animal finishes out at 14 to 1,500 pounds, you know, in your feedlots. Yeah. It's fed to sillers, grain, and byproducts and corn. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, I guess the big looming uh, decision is what to do uh, with the frost seed first. And I'm just going to, obviously, I need to get some legumes in the ground, mm -hmm. half, half grass, half corn clover ish mm -hmm. now with stuff. the cereal rye there you're basically just building carbon you're building organic material and you're going if you crimp it down um your clover should be able to come up through that yeah i would assume um i go the last week of february and and do a half ladino half red half ladino ladino yeah that's clover mm -hmm. ladino clover mm -hmm. half red clover mm -hmm. Yeah. And good red clover. I like to have some medicinal stuff. I want to be able to use some of the stuff I grow too. As far as red clover is good for uh, herb tinctures and things. So that's about it. I know people will boil the blooms and drink the tea. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, so that's that's two that's two legumes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then the grasses could be. 
I would I would what? probably drill a grass in. Oh yeah, just yeah. So after, so you drill it into uh, the growing rye. Yes, um, probably. Um, there's there's two times to 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 drill grass is your spring and your fall. Your spring would be April one to May fifteenth. Mm -hmm. In the fall, it's August one to September fifteenth. Mm -hmm. And you think, wow, August one, why would I want to be planting? Because it's too hot and dry. Yeah. Well. You, you get it in the seed, it gets some dews at night, and then it gets some October, November rains, and then it develops that root system. And you don't touch the grass. You let it develop the root system and grow. And then by May or June of the following year, it's just, you know, it's this tall. Mm -hmm. And but what the, would that be? Gra what, I, I like saying? orchard grass. Orchard I really grass. like orchard grass. Um, however, it likes partial shade, hence orchard grass. Huh. Uh, there's a, a fescue, not the Kentucky 31 fescue that has the tetany, uh, the end of fight in it. Right. Um, more along the lines of like a, end of, a novel end of fight to where like the University of Kentucky, they are really big in fescue because that's where fescue started. Mm -hmm. What they're doing is they're injecting a, ge a, a genetic, um, they're breeding fescue to be able to not have the end of fight fungus and it, you know, cohabitate. But it doesn't give the feverish effect of to the, the animal grazing it mm -hmm. this novel in fight it's not a not genetically modified organism it's a genet it's bred to have the end of fight free right um it's a little pricey but they claim if you don't have fescue at all in the area you want to plant it that it, it will not be overran by the kentucky 31 so like a novel endified fescue, an orchard grass, two legumes, your ladino and your red. And I see more of the perennial ryegrass, which is a, a ryegrass that completes its life cycle in three years. I see people having good luck with it. Is that the one that people are afraid to plant because they're afraid of it turns into a weed? That's annual ryegrass. That's it's a cover crop. That's annual ryegrass. Yes. But you got to know how to terminate it. Okay. Um, cows can terminate for you. Sheep can terminate for you. They mm -hmm. love it. They just eat the crap out of it. Um, there is a um, smooth brome grass, which is a warm, cool season grass. It come and people in this area love it because they What'd plant you call it? I'm sorry. Uh, smooth brome grass. Smooth brome. It has a W or an M on the blade. Okay. You, you peel a blade back and you look and you find a W or an M, depending okay. on how you're looking at it. The people in this area love it because they plant their corn beans in May and they cut their hay in mm -hmm. June. And that's when it comes on. It comes on in June. Um, you can overgraze it and, and kill it back. Um, but if you're rotational grazing, it does pretty good. Smooth brown does pretty good. And then it's the, the recommendation was also for brassica so you're saying that you don't plant, you don't even try that in the spring huh i don't see many people having luck with it because it's just it's the wrong time to get maximum growth on it what other questions you have see i think that's it that's everything i had on my on my uh, on my list phosphorus any way to get phosphorus besides chemical fertilizer chemical fertilizer well, there's a rock phosphate. You get a root down and let roots get down to the, pull it out of the ground. No. That's what that's what Gabe that's what Gabe would say. Gabe Brown. If I can get a root down deep enough. I can pull those minerals out of the yeah out of the rocks. Yeah, yeah, you can <laughs> in North Dakota, South Dakota, wherever he's at. Right. Um, there's a there's a uh, rock phosphate, and I didn't know about it until. Uh, a hog farmer told me about it that his grandpa built up the soil levels with a rock phosphate and he just basically put it in a wagon and had the horses draw the, the mm -hmm. wagon across you know in a, in a row like manner mm -hmm. and drew it off with a pitchfork and a shovel mm -hmm. and uh, he said it was it was it was a natural grade it was in rocks mm -hmm. and he said it took a while to break up but it doesn't leave <laughs> and it's available um, a gentleman down the road here in Pearson Town, on the other side of Valleen, um, he is a UPS driver, and he believes in all natural. He mm -hmm. believes in organic, and 
he said that he goes through Redmond, Redmond. They sell sea salt, they sell kelp, mm -hmm. raised cattle, mm -hmm. and they also sell rock phosphate fertilizer, mm -hmm. if I understood it right. And uh, I see Redmond advertising at a lot of these grazing conferences, mm -hmm. these grass fed grazing conferences. Mm -hmm. So that, that's a way to do it. Okay. You know, uh, now I'm shipping and handling wise. <laughs> right. <laughs> 50 pound bags.